We are not going to let this heinous, despicable, vile, cowardly, cowardly act define who we are as a university community. Hello, my name is Alex Williams. And I'm Juliette Fernandez. Welcome to a special webcast of MSU Presents, a student response to the recent bias incidents on the Montclair State Campus. We're calling this program, We Are As One, based on a piece of graffiti found on campus in response to the hateful messages. It is the theme of our webcast today, We Are As One. Today has been declared a campus day of unity. T-shirts were sold and a rally was held to show everyone that hate is not an MSU value. The story of the hateful messages broke last week. Kayla Fernandez reports. On Tuesday, January 31st, students were informed about the bias incident by a campus-wide email sent by President Susan Cole. In the letter, she details what took place. On January 26, the words die fags were written in marker on the wall adjacent to room 104K in the Student Center CSI complex. On January 27th, a written note with the words, you will die soon, faggots, was reported to have been left under the door of room 104K. And on January 30th, the words, fags will die on February 7th, was written on the wall of the first floor women's restroom near the Ratskeller. Willie Cabrera, a program coordinator at the Student Center, saw and reported the latest hate message. So I go downstairs to see exactly what was written, and once I entered the vicinity and saw that it was uh, severe, I ended up calling the university police. I have to say I was mad because, you know, it's, no one wants to see something so negative in such a positive community. The university responded by raising a gay pride flag above the student center lobby. Many students also signed a gay rights poster now hanging on the front door of the LGBT center. University Vice President Dr. Karen Pennington, along with the university police, held a community meeting last Tuesday to assure students that severe action will take place. And I want the messages to get out there to the criminal and the coward who is writing these messages and trying to threaten this community that you will be right where everybody else ends up, in jail. We are going to find you and we are going to put you in jail. I am more than willing to help put forward a withdrawal slip for any student who feels that this is not the place they want to be. Although no tolerance was the theme of the night, a certain message echoed the room. Fear is not a value of Montclair State. Don't live in fear. You can't because if you do, you're just giving it to what they're asking for. And I plan the entire day to hold my boyfriend's hand, kiss him in public. I don't care. We're just like everybody else. <laughs> Absolutely. University police launched a full investigation as they continue to search for those who are responsible. They encourage anyone with information to please come forward. For MSU Presents, I'm Kayla Fernandez. Dr. Karen Pennington serves as Vice President for Student Development and Campus Life at Montclair State. She joins us today. Welcome, Dr. Pennington. Thank you. Thank you for taking this time out with us. Oh, it's my pleasure to be here. Definitely. Today was declared as the Campus Unity Day. Mm -hmm. What is the mood around campus right now? Oh, it's great. Uh, students are out, the sun is shining. It's just a wonderful time to be at Montclair State University. Excellent. And how did the administration handle the situation up to this point? Well, I think we handled it very well. Uh, we went out immediately with messages, told the students how much we supported them, which we really do, and tried to make this a positive experience for students rather than a negative one. Yeah, definitely being a positive experience that you want to transition to that. What are the messages that are being sent today with the colors, with the rallies, and all of the events that are taking place on campus right now? Well, I think the message is just the same one as the show. We are one. We are a family. And here at Montclair State University, we stick together. We have to stick together in order to be successful. And how do you believe, what measures do you believe that were taken in order to turn this into something positive for the community? Well, I think the most important message is the student voice. We tried to listen to students. We tried to say, what do you need from us to make sure that this works for you? And one of the most important things that came out of it was the rally where we get to all show our support for each other. Definitely. And learning and listening from the students. Do you believe there are ways that the faculty can work with the students and the students can work with the faculty in order to make this a better transition? 
Oh, absolutely. Working together is the way we're going to solve the problems of our campus as well as the problems of the world. And are there any current updates on the investigations that we may be informed about? The police have strong leads, but uh, they're keeping it pretty close to the vest right now. Is there anything else that you think that we can do in order to make this a better transition for the students? I think the most important thing that we can do is to remember that we're all part of the same community. We're all part of the same human family. And what hurts one of us hurts all of us. So we have to stick together in order to, to be good human beings and to survive. Definitely. I felt very um, overwhelmed looking at the many people that showed up to the meeting last week. Can you tell us a little bit about how you felt about that? I was thrilled. I was at first overwhelmed myself because it was not what we anticipated, but I was so proud of our students that so many came out in support of the LGBT community. Definitely. Thank you so much for taking this time with us. My pleasure. Throughout the week, we sent our camera crews to record students offering their support and personal experiences. This is um, a subject that's very touching and personal to me because my sister has to go through this every day. I feel as a university, we're all here to get education. We should be understanding of people's personal preferences, beliefs, whatever they are, no matter how different they are. I have friends who are in the club who feel scared and friends who aren't in the club, like who are still scared because that's a big threat. That's if someone goes through with that, that can affect everyone, not just the people in that club. My roommate and I have another friend um, who are both part of the LGBT community and um, I kind of fear for them. You come to college to educate yourself to be a better person and to have people still acting like that, it's, it's disgusting and it's, it's, a, it's a letdown. Just, it's, a, it's a sad situation, you know, being that, you know, we all are in college and stuff like, well, a university and stuff like that. And um, this is just things, this is unacceptable. Don't let this get you down, still be yourself and show your pride for who you are. We should let people know that there are these types of people on our campus and that they shouldn't be um, uh, made fun of or they shouldn't be um, looked as they're less than or, or that you're better than them because you're not gay or you're not... Um, you're not white or you're not black. I just think that um, in incidences like this, it should just be eradicated because um, you know there's no there's no place for that. This problem doesn't just affect the LGBT community. I feel like once it, I'm not a part of it. I'm not a part of the LGBT community. But once it becomes like a tax on them, then it becomes my problem. You know, it's like a hard situation, but I'll be supporting them that day definitely. I'm pretty sure the whole campus is supporting you some type of way and that if you need any help, I think there's a lot of people that's out there willing to help you in any type of form or fashion. I would wear purple. I wear. I love purple. I actually wore purple the other day. Um, so if, if that's what needs to be done, I'll wear purple every day of the week. I'll be Barney. I'll dress up as Barney if I have to. And we all love each other, so like, let's go Red Hawks. Why are we going to fight and just argue? I'm joined now by Montclair State students Mike McQuaid, the public relations representative from Spectrum, and Francesca Sirocco, the co-organizers of today's rally. Welcome, guys. Thank you. If we can look past these negative messages and find something positive out of it, what would you point out? That the school joined together as one force and now we're bigger, bigger than anything ever before. It's a huge family. Definitely. And yes. What do you think? Um, definitely that, um, you know, these people thought that sending this message out was going to make us all hide and instead everyone rose to stand with us and stand strong and I think that sends out a great message that this is a family and this is one community. And you Francesca actually organized the rallies that are taking place right now outside of uh, the Student Center. How was that experience and what message do we want to communicate to those individuals or the individual that did this? Um, it, was, it was an overwhelming experience but it was probably one of the best experiences I could have ever had. Um, I had a great team behind me and I think, I think the message is going to go that, you know, we were scared for a bit, and you can tell, but being scared turned into this huge project that now we're all out together, and it's just, we're not going to be knocked down. And I think a lot of the fear got turned around into something positive, and it was very nice to see how the community actually came together. Um, how did you feel about that? I thought that was great. I know I had some friends who said, um, I'm going home that day, I won't be on campus. And then they heard about the rally and they heard how much of a police force was going to be here and how seriously this was being taken. And they chose to stay and, you know, throw glitter around the rally right now. <laughs> how do 
how do you think the students can work with the faculty and turn this and keep this positive energy? I think the students have a voice. They're allowed to speak up and say, hey, we have requests and we need to see them done. Um, I think a lot of students have been speaking about that and saying that, you know, we have requests that we'd like to see the administration done. And I know myself and my co-organizers are saying, you know, let's, let's think of some requests that we, reasonable, realistic requests that we can ask the administration for. And what are some of those requests? Um, definitely the cameras in the student center um, by the LGBT center. Um, we're asking for more police on campus normally, not just this week and today. Um, and we're also asking um, for some safe space training and sensitivity training. Great. And what can you say, Mike, that you learned particularly from this? Um, I think what I learned is that in any situation, when a community stands together, it's impressive. And I mean, I at the rally, I couldn't believe that like this was happening and that there was all these people who just wanted to be there and just wanted to be present. And you know, I asked them, do you want to speak? And they're like, no, I just want to be here. So I thought that was great. And I think I really learned that you, know, you, can't, you can't deny the power that a community can have. And what did you learn, Francesca, from this? That I have a family. And it's not just my immediate family, it's not by blood, it's just a family around the entire United States that supports me. Because we've heard from everyone everywhere. And they, even if they couldn't make it today, they've given us statements, you know, we support you no matter what, we're a family. And I think the people on campus have seen that as well, that they have a family outside of their family. Definitely. And I think we've seen a lot of that support even come from outside of the campus. Uh, yesterday I was informed that Rutgers was actually holding these rallies in support of MSU. How, how do you feel about that? That was, we, we didn't plan that actually. Um, Rutgers did and contacted us and said, hey, what are you doing? What can we do to help? And then they said, well, we're going to do a rally as well. And I mean, Mike and I talked about it and I think we both agree that it's amazing to have other people feel what we're feeling, even if that's somewhere in, in the distance. And, you know, the positive message speaks that it's not, it's our generation that's sticking together. It's not just the campus. And hopefully we can maintain actually that positive energy going uh, around the campus. Thank you guys for taking this time out with us, really. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. At the campus-wide meeting responding to the bias incidents, student Timothy G. White shared a poem that he wrote in response to the events. Poem addressed to an elephant in the room with a confederate flag tattoo and a handful of flunkies to share his secrets with. Tell me, do you think yourself a poet? Or are you just a plagiarist? And tell me, on average, how many burning crosses do you hang on your Christmas tree? How many swastikas do you send out as holiday cards through the mail? Does the heat ever get unbearable while walking under, <laughs> under those linen white sheets? Do you know your God? I bet your God looks like Santa Claus. A, be a beer belly, a long white beard, and a couple hundred slaves to order around. I bet your God burnt ants under magnifying glasses at the age of 18. I bet your God voted for Bush. I bet he had, I bet he was a fan of Don't Ask, Don't Tell and Proposition 8. I bet your God used to wear a white beater while he smacked around Mary. I bet your God went to rehab is now just trying to stop himself from turning his faucet water into wine. I bet your God looks just like you. Tell me. Do you feel powerful now for provoking my pen? Because you shouldn't. Our history books are filled with cowards. You must realize you're still just a number. You're not even innovative. The Klan used to hang nooses up outside their houses to express their distaste, while you, well, you leave notes underneath doors. If you ever read this and feel the burning desire to trace the ink back to my pen, you'll probably find me reading. However, do not allow this to discourage you. Smack the book out of my hand, then patiently wait as I, attempt, as I attempt to beat the hate out of you, and as history has already shown, I will not succeed. So I am done, and the blood from your mouth and nose has begun to leave the taste of metal around your teeth. Offer the policemen the exact names you have given me, and watch as they laugh in your face. We're joined now by three students who represent different religious and ethnic backgrounds. Rob Barker, who is a member of the Campus Crusade for Christ, Wiam Ali, the secretary of the Muslim Student Association, and Alex Horwitz, the member of Web of Life, which is considered the gay and lesbian church of Montclair. 
Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. On a day of unity, how does your faith play into the events of today? Well, I was raised in a family where homosexuality was always a sin. It wasn't discussed. And when it was discussed, it was just something that uh, was never a positive image. Okay. But being here today, I just feel like this has restored my faith and that there is so much acceptance, whether you are gay or straight, whether you like homosexuality or not, I think the point that we're making is that we're here and we're not going anywhere and we will not be silenced. Thank you. And how about you, Weam? I mean, um, before God even mentions anything about sin or um, consequences, he mentions about his mercy, he mentions about his forgiveness, and he also teaches people to defend equality, to defend peace, and to stand up against oppression. So being united here is, to me, a religious obligation. Very interesting. And it's very beautiful. Yeah, um, you know, Scripture definitely does say that homosexuality is a sin, but at the same time, it says that, you know, hatred in the heart is the same as murder. So I think that the point of the gospel is that God's love covers everyone and he will not cast out anyone who, who comes to Jesus and there's abundant forgiveness to be had in him. Thank you. Now, we, um, some people are saying that there's somewhat of an anti-Islamic tone to it due to the notes that were mm -hmm. found a few months ago, late yes. October early November. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, my first initial reaction was frustration, pretty much. Who? No one has any type of authority to speak on behalf of my beliefs, which, of course, it's a, like, especially if it's a cowardly act, you know, and t to speak on behalf of my own beliefs, which are not even true. So um, not only myself, but a lot of my, you know, peers in the Muslim Student Association were also pretty frustrated about that. Okay, thank you. And how does your faith impact your perspective? Do you yeah. want to answer that for us? Yeah, um, I think that my faith requires me to focus on the gospel and really just realizing how much Jesus has done for me. Uh, I need to react out of how he has loved me and, and share that love with people who, who need it. You look at even even these people who are writing these hateful uh, things, you know, is the love of Christ really penetrating their heart? Are they coming from that kind of perspective? So I really need to, everything comes back to the gospel that Jesus has loved the world and, and people need that. Would you like to answer the question, how has your faith impacted the events of today? How do you think the events have panned out? I think I, my faith is my perspective because when I was growing up I didn't have much belief about God because I was told so many things about homosexuality and how God does not like that and being at the gay and lesbian church here on campus it's just restored so much faith inside of me and I think regardless of what religion you are it's a non-denominational church and uh, I still go to it just because there's such inspirational words and the service is amazing and I'm surrounded by people who I love and I know that they love me. Okay. I see you nodding in agreement. Your thoughts or? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, definitely faith gives us a uh, community where we can be surrounded by uh, the love of God and, and we can encourage each other and reflect that into each other. Uh, so yeah, that's great. William, how do you think the campus has reacted to the events? I think the reaction was very appropriate, very wise, and I personally applaud the MSU community for coming together, for not tolerating any hate crimes, not mm -hmm. tolerating any inappropriate acts or any cowardly acts, and uh, something that I truly appreciate, and I feel that right. this person isn't, doesn't even deserve to be part of this unified community. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us and sharing your perspective. We check in now with other students as they offer their concerns for MSU administration and campus security. Maybe just have more cops stationed around and like interacting with students, just like talking to them. This, this is not something that happens every day. So if people think that improvement is having a lot of cops here, I don't think that's uh, the right decision. I think if anything, we need to just find out more about what's going on in students' minds and maybe having cameras somewhere to be honest. I won't walk certain times at night because I just feel I'm unsafe 
And they should really install cameras because if there was cameras everywhere, like there wouldn't be a problem of catching maybe the people who are doing this. When you have more than one eyes on a situation, you'll have a better outcome of finding out who did this because now I highly doubt this person is going to do something like this again, knowing that the campus just knows about it and that the campus is against them. I think we should have a universal meeting so it can be addressed publicly and openly across the campus so everyone can be informed of the situation that happened so no one will have misconceptions of what happened and so we can make strides to make it better. Joining Alice, Alex and I now are two editors of the student newspaper, The Montclarian, Catherine Millsop, editor-in-chief, and Tanja Reiki, the news editor. Welcome, guys. Thank you. What are your takes as editors and reporters for The Montclarian how has this experience been for you? Well, I originally wrote the piece as the news was breaking, as the email was sent for, from Dr. Cole originally. So I just feel that there's so many perspectives of the issue, and it impacts such a wide amount of people, such a wide demographic. I think it's great that we had this day of unity, joining forces and really showing the campus community that we're here for one another. There's just so many different perspectives that I learned from a lot of people that I interviewed, administration, students as well. How has that been for you, Catherine? Well, I know we all felt um, on Wednesday when we were producing the paper that this was a forefront issue. We made it the front page story, and then we decided to write the editorial uh, about how we felt our reaction to it. And we just came out saying that it was um, a foolish, cowardly action, and we condemned it. And, you know, as our editor who wrote it said, what, what hurts one of us hurts all of us. So that's been our position on it. I think that our message has definitely definitely been clear. You know, we are as one, and it's been actually very heartwarming to see the campus come together like that. How are your thoughts on that? Right, well, I actually had a unique opportunity as well to kind of tackle the issue. I work at Out Magazine and Out.com. It's one of the world's leading gay publications, so I really thought that since I'm a student here and I'm an openly gay student that it was kind of my duty to, to kind of bring some national attention to that. Mm -hmm. um, I know so many people that were really distraught by the news and I wanted to kind of share that with as many people as possible. So I really talked to my editors about it and we came up to try and do like a blog post on it and it's gotten a lot of feedback, so a lot of support. What has been some of that feedback that you can share with us? We've been hearing, you know, when you have, when you put information out there on the internet, people can, you know, reblog it and they can comment on it. And so we've been got, getting a lot of support uh, from people all over the country. So it's been really great. I think that's one of the things that definitely has been very noticeable, the outside support. Uh, do you guys have any experiences in that or, do, or any events that have happened to you in that? Um, well, I know that we have received national coverage. Outlets like ABC and CBS have been covering the events. I think it's great that we no, we're not trying to hide the message of what happened on this campus. Immediately, students were notified, and news outlets were notified, and let's admit it, we have come together and we are fighting for this cause instead of brushing it under the rug like, oh, it never happened. I think it's really important to address the issue at hand and come together and really, you know, work together. It's almost like enough is enough, you know. I feel like every year you're hearing about kids that are taking their own lives and yeah. people that are really feeling alone and I feel like it was really great to see the campus come together as we did and show that we're not going to take it anymore. You know, bullying and things like this are an issue in our country every day so I think it was really great to kind of see everybody come together and show all the support. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you guys for your time. The topics of bullying and homophobia continue to make headlines across our country. It is a problem that does not limit itself to one specific area and unfortunately occurs in most people's lives. We leave you with a performance from our students, Erica Appel, Garland Dance, Alex Rivera, and Julia Velmer, who remind you that if you need somebody to talk to, you can lean on me. From the Dumont Television Center on the campus of Montclair State University, we are as one, and hate is not an MSU value. Hum, 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 hum. Hum, 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 hum. Hum, 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 hum. Sometimes in our lives, we
we all have pain, we all have sorrow, but if we are wise, we know that there's always tomorrow. Lean on me when you're not strong, and I'll be your friend, I'll help you carry on, for it won't be long till I'm gonna need somebody to lean on. Please, please swallow your pride, if I have things you need to strong and I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on for it won't be long till I'm gonna need somebody to lead.